I wanted to talk Alexander Alexander Usk. Um, apologies if I've mispronounced that name. This is a name I've been aware of for some time. He won the heavyweight Olympic gold medal in 2012. Um, Anthony Joshua won the super heavyweight um, gold medal because in amateurs they, they split it down as a heavyweight division and the super heavyweight division. And Alexander Usk won the uh, super heavyweight, sorry, the heavyweight version of the Olympic gold. He's a Ukrainian. He signed with K2 Promotions, which is the Klitschko's promotional company. And he's being trained by James Ali Basir, who is one of the sort of assistant trainers alongside Jonathan Banks of Vladimir Klitschko. Uh, at present, he's unbeaten. Uh, I'll pull up his record in just one second. Um, so I've got that exactly to hand. But at present, he's unbeaten. And he's a name who is let's just say, attracting a bit of attention uh, in the public arena. I've heard his name mentioned on a number of boxing channels, on a number of boxing forums, certainly as a man to what's out for. He seemed to be, he's one of these boxers, and there's a few of them out there. Uh, I'll try and think of a few more. Guys like um, Errol Spence would be another example. Guys who are very highly rated by people who seem to know a lot about boxing, who I perhaps haven't checked out and covered on my channel as much as I should have done. Anyway, Alexander Usk, seven pro fights. He's won all of them by KO. So, seven from seven, rated extremely highly on BoxRec. He's ranked 11th in the cruiserweight division, despite the fact he's only had seven KOs. And he's, um, he's 28 years old, so still got a lot of time to go. In terms of the opponents he's been in with, I'm just scrolling down on the records now. Nobody who stands out as anyone overly relevant in the cruiserweight division. Then again, there's people who will know more about the cruiserweight division than I do. So, let's talk Alexander Risk. As I say, he's one of these names who's been mentioned to me by all sorts of sources. I've seen him on boxing forums and boxing YouTube channels. And I had a request about two weeks ago um, from a viewer of my channel if I could do a, a video with an overview of Alexander Usk. So I've watched a few of his fights. Now, on forums, a lot of people are saying this could be the next heavyweight champion of the world. Let me say I disagree with that. The guy is currently operating in the cruiserweight division. And whilst he is, he's a big guy, he's, he clearly is a big guy. For me, he's hardly entering the ring with a rippling six-pack. He doesn't look like he is necessarily having to operate on a sort of no-carb diet or you know, no-fat diet to make cruiserweight. Now, there may be people closer to us who know more about this than I do, but looking at him, he doesn't look like a guy who's killed himself to make weight for the 200-pound division. The other thing I'd say is he's a guy who, as far as I can make out, his best attributes are his, his hand speed. And his, his movement, you know, he, he's got really, really good movement. He can dance around the ring. He's got lateral movement. And he, he throws good combinations, good hand speed. Now, for me, if he threw on another 20, 30 pounds to try and make himself up to be a, a, a decent-sized heavyweight, it's potentially going to negatively affect that. Um, I think the guy's better off where he currently is a cruiserweight. I mean, we're in an era of gigantic heavyweights, you know, Lennox Lewis, the Klitschko brothers, Tyson Fury, Nikolai Valuev, you know. These are not the days where it is easy to be in the heavyweight division at 210 pounds or 220 pounds. For that matter, even 230 pounds, you know. There's guys who are a lot taller, heavier, bulkier than Usk. Um, and for me, where he currently is at cruiserweight is, is, is good for him. We'll see how he develops. His style is attractive to watch. You can see straight away he's an accomplished amateur. Um, it's funny, he, he's kind of got like that. Um, I don't want to say like tippy-tappy. He's kind of got like a sort of uh, refined amateur style in the same way that a... Uh, I'm not saying he's prolific than a Lomachenko. He's possibly better than a Billy Joe Saunders. But he's kind of got that look about him. 
Um, you know, he's got the hand speed. He sort of it looks like he's conscious of scoring points and placing his shots in an amateur fashion. Um, he's an attractive fighter to watch because he, he comes forward. He's front foot heavy, um, but he's also got back foot capability as well. And really, what I'm getting at here is is the movement and the hand speed is is very good. The punch variety is also very good. Um, this is a guy who stops people by going to the body, uh, which I always like to see. He uses the jab, and his jab isn't lethal. It's more of a sort of range finder, but he uses the jab to effectively work off it. He's not necessarily punishing you with the jab in the same way a Klitschko is, but he's using that to create an opening. And often what you'll see him do is throw a straight, obviously, or, or hook to the body. And he's a guy who clearly has capability um, in terms of that hook to the body. He's also got quite a nice uppercut which he throws, which is really, really attractive to watch. And what I like about him is, is there's hints of versatility there. You know, we've got a guy uh, who can move, a guy with speed, a guy who at least has levels of power. You know, he's got 100% knockout ratio, but he doesn't. He doesn't just stick to the did a basic one too, you know, he's got more to his game. In terms of being a fully rounded article, um, obviously he hasn't been in with the level of opposition who's necessarily going to bring out the best in him. You know, he hasn't fought a guy who I would consider a top 10, top 15 cruiserweight. And until he does, it's, it's kind of hard to predict how good he actually is. I mean, in terms of the power punching... I'm slightly sceptical as to how hard this guy actually hits. You know, the 100% knockout ratio it looks good. But even with some of the biggest punches in the sport, let's look at, let me give two examples. Sergei Kovalev, he's an absolute killer in terms of his power. Steps up to the top level, fights a top three light heavyweight in Bernard Hopkins, no stoppage. Deontay Wilder, you know, a frightening puncher, leaving guys quivering on the ground. Steps up to, say, top 5, top 10 heavyweight level in Bermain's to burn. Suddenly, no stoppage. You know, the fight goes the distance. Yeah, Alexander Usk is stopping guys at present, and he's got a 100% knockout ratio. But I'm not seeing the kind of frightening knockout power from him that necessarily leads me to believe he's going to be a huge puncher in the top 10 or top 5 of the cruiserweight division. Yeah, when you face the guys with more advanced defences and typically more advanced chins, the knockouts tend to stop. And him, alongside Anthony Joshua, you know, whilst they clearly carry power, the way they're taking care of business, I'm not 100% convinced that power will correspond to the very top of the division. But we shall wait and see. I think the other slight concerns I have about Alexander Risk at present is can he be stifled? You know, he's someone who, who's at his best when working off a jab, being allowed to move, you know, dominating in that sense. How would he cope against, now I appreciate Derek Chisora is a heavyweight, but how would he cope against a Derek Chisora style fighter? How would he cope against someone who'd want to put his chest on us, you know, want to throw shots to his body, want to fight in the inside? He's quite upright, this, you know, he's quite, he stands quite upright. And I wonder if somebody can sort of get inside on him and work on him, how will he react to that? That's not a criticism, it's just that we don't know how he'll react because we haven't seen him in such a situation. Um, I've seen a few punches slip through. You know, at the end of the day, he's new to a pro career, it's the fight game, punches are going to slip through. What I'm saying is, I've seen enough from Usk to make me think he's a fighter to follow, to make me think he could, you know, has got serious potential. He's certainly an entertaining fighter to watch. He's got a combination of that amateur style, which we all like to see, plus a little bit of power. You know, he's technically good. And it, the way he holds himself, you can tell the guy can fight. The way he moves, the way he throws punches, you know, you can see instantaneously the guy's got a bit of class about him. At present, the unknown areas are inside game, defence, and power at the elite level. And those are a few things that are questions I look for him to answer. Yeah, right now, I haven't seen the proof on paper to make me think he could beat a Marco Hook. Certainly in terms of the future of the heavyweight division, I think 
it's much more likely to be Tyson Fury, who's actually a substantially younger man than Isk, or Joseph Parker, who is five or six years younger than Isk, as opposed to the, this guy. But he's certainly got potential. He certainly does. Um, at present, I'd say he's a very, very, very promising fighter for someone who has had seven pro fights. Given the level of opposition he's been in with, does it justify the hype? Potentially. I mean, a lot of good people in boxing are talking a lot of good things about this guy. Um, he's clearly going places. But he's got time on his side. He's 28, which is not overly old for a cruiserweight. And I think there's a little bit of refinement that can be worked on, specifically in terms of making him a more well-rounded individual. I'd like to see him given a few more testing fights, potentially with someone who's going to work on the inside, potentially with someone who's got a bit more of a chin, potentially with an opponent who's a bit more proven, before stepping him up to the very elite level. Yeah, I don't know the cruiserweight division inside out, I'm not going to pretend I do, but Ola Afalabi, you know, that's the kind of fight I'd be looking at for us right now, as opposed to a, a Marco Hook or somebody right at the the top of the division, you know, potentially even one or two fights before or off the lobby. Um, a lot to like about this guy, one to follow. He hasn't shown me everything I need to see to confirm in my mind that he is the next big deal. There's a lot of unbeaten cruiserweights out there with mega knockout power, knockout ratios at present. A lot of guys from Eastern Europe specifically who's resumes I'm less familiar with than say in the heavyweight division um, this guy is very watchable if you haven't watched him I'd check him out you won't be disappointed but let's see how he does against the uh, the higher levels at this point I'm interested but I'm not convinced and I'm sitting on the fence let me know your thoughts thanks as always for watching I'm keen to discuss